What's up, Willie P, and welcome to the Hidden Gems of William Patterson. My name is Damani Rackley. And my name is Amanda Guerrier. Today, we will show you why William Patterson is such a gem. Amanda, do you know what program at William Patterson is ranked among the top 10 in the nation? I'm not sure, but I'd have to guess the marketing program. That's a good guess, but it's actually the jazz program. Oh, yeah, I heard something like that. Let's go to Matt Aponte for more. This is Matthew Aponte with Man on the Street. We're here today to test people's knowledge about William Patterson's jazz music program. Where do you think William Patterson is ranked for music performance in New Jersey and the United States? In New Jersey, I would say 10, and in the US, I would say 100. Actually, William Patterson is ranked number five in New Jersey and number 177th in all the United States. How are you doing today, sir? What's going on? Can I ask you one quick question? Sure. Do you know how many graduate and undergraduate students make up the Jazz Studies program here at William Patterson? I'm going to go ahead and guess 365, uh, one for each day. 365? Actually, the Jazz Studies program consist of 20 graduate students and 65 undergraduate students. What do you have to say? I had the 65 part. Just... <laughs> there you have it. Hi, how are you doing today? Hi. Can I ask you one quick question? Sure, what's, what's your question? William Patterson University has just started a $15 million drive to construct a new building on campus. Do you know what that building is and what it will be used for? Uh, if they're constructing anything, I hope it's a parking garage because parking is terrible. I hope so too, but it's actually the Clark Terry Concert Hall which would be used for jazz performances. Who, Al Clark? Just maybe. There you have it. So what you were just listening to were the sultry sounds of Michael Emmert, and he's a graduate student at William Patterson's Jazz Studies program. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Al. Let's, let's start off at the beginning. Um, what got you involved in the saxophone? When did you start playing? I actually started playing when I entered the sixth grade uh, in my middle school at the age of 11. And I was sort of following in my sister's footsteps, who was a couple years older than me, and she played flute. Right, right. You're, you're here at William Patterson as a graduate student. What, what, what drew you to the university? Well, was, part of it was mainly the location. Um, uh, William Patterson is only about 30 minutes outside of New York City. Of course. And as a jazz musician, that's essentially just Mecca f where uh, the entirety of the culmination of the greatest jazz musicians in the world sure. meet and play on a regular basis. And, and your, your favorite jazz musician at this point? I know it's an unfair question. Well, uh, alive or...? Uh, saxophone, alive or dead? Oh, okay, John Coltrane. That's, oh, nice. That's so very easy. You're a train fan. Very <laughs> yeah, good, very yeah, good. Um, so you, you get here, you're involved in this program. Are, are there any particular faculty members that, that really um, influenced you? Uh, yes. Uh, again, part of the reason why I came here were because of the great faculty members that actually reside and um, teach here. Uh, the person I study saxophone with now, his name is Rich Perry, and he's constantly playing in New York with a, an abundance of like um, top ticket names. Right. And um, another person was who's unfortunately just passed away recently was Mr. Mulgrew Miller, right. who is probably one of the greatest jazz pianists to ever Right, ever he lived. played with everyone. Did he play with Dizzy? And mm -hmm. he played... Big time. Yeah, Woody Shaw, um, everyone, and you know. And what 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 kind of influence did he have on the program? Did he really was he the program? Was that is really he represented 
a the classic form of um, jazz education, which is he was always playing, always playing with the student, kind of leading by example, um, giving little bits of wisdom so that the students could actually grow from that as opposed to having to force feed them every little bit that they should be doing. Nice. And, and as we start to wrap up, um, you, you get your graduate degree, and where do you go? I'm actually going to be heading back down to Florida for a little bit of time so that I can save up money, um, hold a job for a little while, uh, so that I can eventually move back up to New York City and live there for a little while and see if I can make it once I have a little bit of money saved up and paid off some bills. Nice. It's a little harder to do in New York and a little expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been talking with Mr. Michael Emmert. He's a uh, graduate student at the William Patterson Jazz Studies Program. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Wow, I had no idea we had such a great jazz program. Yeah, it's amazing. If you want to learn more about William Patterson's award-winning programs, stay tuned. <laughs> They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. but I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look inside a mysterious part of campus. Hobart Hall, where communication students of different concentrations spend most of their time. Um, I don't know. Do you know what Hobart Hall is? Do you know what Hobart Hall is? I believe it's an old wooden ship. <laughs> used in the Civil War era. In a building far, far away lies a world unknown to most students, but those who cross the bridge enter a world of technology, creativity, and passion. They enter Hobart Hall, the alien planet. It's the center of all the communications department um, classes, all the, the communications department offers here. We've got our TV studio, we've got film classes, lots of interesting stuff going on there. Well, what went into this new studio um, to set it up is, is a lot of effort by uh, faculty and staff. This is 18 months to two years in the making, a lot of preparation, a lot of researching equipment, and then of course the construction itself took uh, well over a year. It was a huge project, a $2.5 million upgrade, it's a, it's a big deal. They do a weekly sports show, they do a news show, they do a variety show. And there's a lot happening, it's used every day. This new facility is high definition. All digital equipment, all digital audio, all high definition. This studio is really, uh, is really a showcase for the university. Um, what you see and experience in this place what students experience in this place is exactly what they'll be experiencing when they go out and try to get a job in the marketplace. Um, New York is the number one market in the country, and this is on par with some of the stuff that you see out there at NBC and CBS and ABC. We had a CBS News producer come in here and say, wow, this is, this is better equipment than probably you know, 150 of the uh, top uh, 200 markets. So it really is um, a, a perfect combination of, a, of, a, of new technology, cutting edge technology, and excellent teaching um, faculty you know, coming together and providing students with a, a, a path to employment that is, uh, 
I think one of the best in the whole area. Alongside our state-of-the-art television studio, you will find our award-winning radio station, Brave New Radio. Well, in the last two years consecutively, uh, we've won Best College Radio Station in the nation. We've done really well in that respect, and also we've actually been like international headquarters for College Radio Day, um, uh, which is 700 stations in 43 countries. So it's actually done really well. We've actually done tremendously well in a very short period of time. Uh, college Radio Day is a day that unifies, you know, all the college radio stations, not just in the United States, but like in the entire world. And, um, you know, it helps raise money uh, for, you know, all of college radio and just, it's, you know, it builds, um, it, it's all about where, you know, music really starts, which is on college radio. So it's so much fun. Um, I think that, you know, we are one of the best stations in the nation just because of all the stuff we're doing with uh, College Radio Day and things like that. Uh, we're definitely one of the you know, best stations that I can think of. We, we mostly use state-of-the-art industry equipment, like we use AudioVault, which is um, the industry standard for uh, automation and broadcasting. So we don't actually um, um, do anything that you wouldn't see it out of place at any other station. So we, we use the industry standard, basically. Yeah. We have Braveathon every year where we have 15 artists who play uh, over 15 hours, which is huge for us. Um, it's just a day that we celebrate the up and coming musicians. Um, it's a fun day, it's an exhausting day, but it's also a lot of fun and the music is excellent. I think the future is great, we've been doing well, the trajectory is sort of like that going up. And, um, I just want us to keep um, striving for excellence in what we're doing and to keep producing uh, the best radio that we possibly can. Um, I think it's all good, I think it's all good. I think. Um, Students like being here. It's, it's more than just a, a building, more than just a room, and more than just a college radio station. It's a place where students are learning and they're also making friends and having great experiences. Well, there you have it, Willie P. students. Thanks for traveling into our world. Up next, we are staying in the alien planet and taking a look at the creative and passionate minds behind the William Patterson Film Festival. Stay tuned. They said I couldn't dream called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Have you seen any good movies lately, Damani? Not really, nothing great out. Maybe one day you'll be watching a movie made by a William Patterson student. A student? That's right. Another hidden gem of William Patterson is the Film Festival Student Film Association puts together every year. As most of you know, we have a film club that meets here on Thursdays in the Martini Room, which is open to everyone, not just comm students. They meet, discuss current things happening in film, students working on projects, and have competitions, but most importantly, the film festival. The film festival is not extremely known past comm students. However, it's open to the entire school. In the future coming up, we're going to learn all about the nuts and bolts on how festivals come together, who it's open to, and what they have planned for the two coming up this fall. And with that said, enjoy this feature on the SFA.
The Student Film Association has been having a film festival every spring semester for almost 20 years now. We take submissions from students in film classes, from film one, film two, film three, and then in addition to that we have an alternative category. Uh, well, alternative is anything that's not made at William Patterson for a class. Okay. So if it's not in film one or TV, whatever, then it's considered alternative. And I believe as long as it's under 20 minutes, then you can submit it and made within the past year. We accept anybody, not just in the film club, any, not anybody who's in any film classes. We'll take anybody's film uh, from anybody in the school who wants to submit or has an interest in filmmaking. Usually require about a 10, 12 minute length maximum. That way we don't run into any like super long nights or issues with that. But we want to accept everybody's film so everyone has an equal chance to share what they've made. If you're new to filmmaking and you don't really have much of an opportunity to say, learn about how to make a film because you're not a film student, say you're a writing major or an English major, something like that, and you want to learn to make film, we tr strongly encourage you guys to, to come to the film club and work on other student sets because you're going to learn more there than we even are taught in our classes. For the Collegiate Film Festival, which is uh, one that we're putting together this year, uh, for the first time we're going to bring many different colleges together and different student filmmakers. So the way that we want to run this is that we're going to have different categories, you know, best actor, acting, best screenplay, whatever, we feel we're still kind of working out the kinks on that one. But for the Collegiate Film Festival, we're gonna have, instead of just individual students submitting, we're having students submitting one film from their school to compete against the other schools. So it's much more of a competition-based film festival. Uh, we're gonna have different judges, special guests, producers, actors, actresses from around the world. We emailed a bunch of different schools around the state and pretty much put their filmmaking skills to the test against one another. Rather than, I know a bunch of schools have their own contests, mm -hmm. this is combines all the schools into one contest and makes something that I hope would be really big someday. We, we already have seven different schools on board right now, wow. so we're trying to definitely build that up. For our club, we're making a screenwriting competition which anybody could submit their screenwrite to, or their script. Um, and it, it's gotta be, Seven to 15 pages long, and what you want to do is you want to build a story, a very original story, based on something that is good to show our skills as filmmakers as a club, and if you win the contest, your movie will be made by the SFA, and then we're going to produce that and display it at the New Jersey Collegiate Film Festival. I definitely encourage uh, writers or English majors or any major if you want. Um, to make a screenplay. For students who are thinking of submitting their work but they're nervous, I, I say just go for it. You'll get good and you'll get bad feedback, but all of it is constructive criticism. It's to perfect their art, so it's, it's only going to do them good to show their work and get feedback. The, 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 the one thing that the film festival does, um, which a number of the events here in Com does, is it helps create a culture. And I think when the construction of the TV studio was going on, that culture here was dead. And it was a terrible thing to see. The TV students, they didn't have anything. They weren't doing anything. And when I got here, this was a thriving community. The students were making f films all the time. There were TV shows all the time. I would go in the studio and watch the live shows and just be in awe of what the students would do. I look forward to my Friday classes because I knew at 2 o'clock they would shoot something live and I went every week to watch it. Um, and now I can see that that culture coming back and I could see the students I mean the, the building thrives on the students I mean the faculty are important um, but the truth is it's the students that make it and it's important for the students to recognize how important they are to one another because they're going to be the ones who call each other for a job coming up you're in for a breath of fresh air you won't want to miss it so stay tuned They said I couldn't dream. 
called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Ah, do you love the smell of fresh air and the great outdoors? Are you looking to be more active or consider hiking as a new hobby? How about High Mountain Park Reserve? It has five trails running up to nearly five miles. On a clear day, it features a stunning view of New York City and some amazing views of nature and wildlife. So how far is this relaxing getaway? It's right here on our very own William Patterson campus. Coming up, students and faculty chime in on their experiences and Nick McIntosh takes us on an adventure through these trails. Take a look. We're talking about it, so we decided to take a trip and explore all the trails all throughout campus. And it brought us to different waterfalls, cliffs, and we actually even taken there by our first year seminar class. Um, I actually heard you can see uh, New York from there. Yeah, actually, if you were to go further up the trails, further towards the apartments, you can actually take a further trail over to the cliffs, and you can see all New York, New Jersey, beautiful views. Hey, how you doing, Rob? Thanks for joining me today. Uh, tell me a little bit about your personal experiences on the hiking trail at William Patterson. Uh, the, the trails around here are actually very beautiful. There's a, actually quite an extensive amount of uh, places you can go. Um, uh, in the times I've gone last, Last year, I was able to go uh, during the fall, and it's just beautiful. You know, walking around with the you know the leaves, and uh, you can go up uh, to the highest point, uh, and you can look out, and you can see New York City. So oh wow, it's, cool! It's quite the, you know, it's, a, it's cool to be able to look out and yeah, see. Definitely a, a good place for photographers. Hey Zach, thanks for joining us today. Um, there has been this rumor about a secretive hiking trail on campus. Uh, do you do you know anything about this trail? No, I don't know anything about uh, any hiking trails on campus. Today uh, we're here to check out some of the hiking trails offered at Willie P. Um, I personally didn't know about them myself, so I came here to check them out. Never been here before, like me. You can grab yourself a trail map and uh, just follow any trail you like. Uh, there's a blue trail, an orange trail, red trail, a white trail, and a yellow trail. The symbol here represents the beginning of the trail. Follow the footsteps. Let's go. This marker here means to continue straight. This symbol here means to turn right. Uh, you see the trail will veer off around to the right side. Now that we finally reached the top, I realized why people hike. Check out the view. If you go to different parts of the peak, you get different views. You can actually see Manhattan from here on a clear day. It's very relaxing, especially during finals week. Also on campus, there's a waterfall. Uh, if you start at Heritage Hall, just walk straight this way into the woods and follow the trail.
some of you may not believe that beauty exists on William Patterson University, that waterfall begs to differ. one of my favorite places to be and this is my favorite time of year to come. Wow, who knew our school had so much to offer? I know, right? Our school. You learn something new every day. Thanks for watching the hidden gems of William Patterson. Bye, you guys.